This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be reviewing a new perfume. Got a little sample out here. Louis Vuitton is our fragrance today. On the beach. Let me try to show you on the... Not to be... And this is so funny. When the actual wonderful gentleman who gave me this... Uh, lovely, lovely fella gave me this... Um, um, sample said, you know, in the training they were taught to be very careful <laughs> to not add another word in front of on the beach. S on the beach. So... Uh, it's just on the beach. You can envision what else comes with it. And the vial is very cute. Even the samples reflect the actual full bottles. They got this faded ombre effect from orange into blue in this case. On the beach. Release date 2021. This is a brand new one, you guys. Released this year. Jacques Cavalier Beltrude is the nose behind this one, as he is the nose behind all Louis Vuitton perfume since 2016. So I'm going to spray it on. Before I do so, might I remind you that uh, if you like my channel and keep coming back for more but haven't subscribed yet, now is your chance to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob, all spelled together on Patreon as well. And thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. Um, means the world to me. Thumb up this video if you like it. Don't forget to thumb it up or watch it first and then thumb it up if you like it at the end of it, but do thumb it up. And uh, thank you to my co-reviewers in the live chats here with me because this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So I have sprayed it. I've been testing it out these days. You see it's almost half empty. And I have sprayed it a couple of hours ago just to have a dry down, which is right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to spray the fresh opening here as well. Okay, so we have both of them. Now, you can check the review of uh, California Dream, which is kind of from this series, also from Louis Vuitton. I've reviewed that one. Uh, I'll, post, I'll, post, I'll post or put the link in the card section up above, but also in the description box down below. So that's kind of a similar series or range, kind of a summary vibe. Um, on the beach, and I also have to restrain myself from using the S word before it, opens up to something interesting. It has top notes, yuzu, which is um, like a sweeter grapefruit. That's kind of the smell of it. But it has a hint of orange. And neroli. That's the opening. Then we got middle notes. I wrote it all down in my little booklet here. Uh, rosemary, pink pepper, the smell of sand, thyme, or thyme, but thyme, and cloves. You know, I love me some cloves. Base notes, cypress. Now, I read the ingredients list and I thought, huh. I know I'm not the biggest fan of Louis Vuitton perfumes, and I thought, well, this sounds interesting, but let's see if Jacques Cavalier, who I adore because he has made some incredible perfumes, including uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Classique. Uh, so, you know, but most of the perfumes of his that I've reviewed on my channel, I'm, I'm like, it doesn't warrant, right? But I kind of was interested in the ingredients list of this one. And then, I have to be honest, I thought to myself, okay, how is he going to manage to butcher this? <laughs> And then I tried it on. It's my dry down, my opening notes. And I got to say, you guys, after, I don't know, I've reviewed like more than 10 or 15 of their perfumes on my channel throughout the years. I got to say, I think we finally are getting to something that I would want to buy. The opening is not the best, again, because uh, Neroli, okay. But anyway, <laughs> and and I mean, the Yuzu, it's still from the citrus family, and I ain't a big fan of citruses. Now this, you know, as California Dream, this is kind of like um, going in that direction, okay, fresh. Th that was all about the Mandarin. And it was just like, what a waste of money to spend all that money on something that 
Yes, smells like really expensive Mandarin essence, but still not more than that. Here, however, maybe because of the cypress, maybe because of the sand, whatever chemical component is used to smell as sand, whether it be the cloves, the thyme, the rosemary, these are all things I really like a lot. Pink pepper, I guess they needed it to zest up the composition a little bit. But this thing, I gotta say, it kind of hits the spot for me. It really does. The, the opening, less so, but then it's, it's development, uh, mid-notes and then dry down. It really goes places for me. Mm. Uh, so this is interesting. Jack says, will Jacob like this? Asking the stream bot because we're filming live. And, this, and Bubbles the bot answered, not sure, Jack. Not sure. Good point. Well, let me tell you, first of all, it doesn't smell like anything else I've smelled before. In the composition, like when everything melts, melts together right around the midpoint of the development of this perfume, everything blends in so interestingly. It doesn't have that citrusy note anymore. It doesn't have just a cypress note. It doesn't have just a pepper. It's nothing. Everything is blended so well. It's nothing in particular. You don't smell one ingredient more than the other, but together they create something quite unique. Very pleasant, very soothing, very calming. To me, this smells of a beautiful sunset uh, with gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous orange, warm orange hues and rays of light that are kind of set on a background of blue skies, not a cloud in sight. This is the bluest sky you can imagine. And it's a warm, warm sun sunset after you've been with your friends. This is a weekend type of sunset. You've been to the beach, yet whichever beach allows it, because a lot of beaches don't allow it, but for those beaches where you are allowed to have a barbecue with your friends, like you had a barbecue moment, you've grilled some good old food you like very much. It's kind of one of those like good old sunsets with friends. And then you took a little, you have your little beamer with you. I know we're very getting very technological here, but I'm envisioning, bear with me, I'm envisioning a scenario where you can also go to the drive-in movies, but you're at the beach and you have your own little kit with you. Okay, how you motorize it is up to you. You can motorize a little beamer, a little flat little you know white screen you open up and you project a little movie on that screen on the beach right after the sunset and you're all cuddled up with your friends so from that warm sunset on the beach with that cool air you know as the sun sets it gets quite cold on the beach you have your blankets ready to cover yourself up and you transition from day to night while you're while you've set up that little streaming device that's going to beaming device that beamer is going to beam the movie you're going to watch and it's going to be a slasher because you know you just love to watch on the beach a little horror movie slasher from the 80s maybe at crystal lake it could be a jason Voorhees scenario uh but something definitely a horror movie that is located on a beach next to the water actually no you know what this is perfect for it follows it follows also takes place close to the beach um this perfume is perfect to combine with It Follows, the movie. Check out It Follows, it's one of my favorite. It is, hands down, the best horror movie made in the last decade, or I guess it's even older than 10 years by now, or maybe right about. Um, it's received um, so-so critiques, but to me, it's, it's the best. Disaster Piece did the music for it. I mean, I have the soundtrack on both vinyl and CD. I'm obsessed with that movie, I just love it. Two bits, I love it that much. It takes me back to a time. The sunsets in It Follows are exactly what this perfume smells of. Like, for me, now that it's locked in my mind like this, every time I'm going to watch It Follows, I'm going to have to wear this perfume. And I'm going to have those visions of the beach, of having food with friends. Almost like an Eternity Calvin Klein advertisement from the 80s. You know, you have that kind of typical Calvin Klein knitwear wardrobe that you're wearing, very loose, thick knit. Um, and then you're, there's sand everywhere and 
blonde streaks of hair through your hair because the sun has bleached them a little bit with time. And you're with your friends and everybody smiling. Everything is that type of closeness, togetherness, and familiar warmth that only friends and family can give you is what this smells of. That's how good it is. It's very clean. It's not groundbreaking. But but so is family love. Family, I mean, it's supposed to be loving. Your best friends and family are not supposed to... The emotions you feel for them are not supposed to be groundbreaking. They're supposed to be safe, pleasant, beautiful. They're supposed to make you feel good about yourself. They're supposed to be the most supportive backbone in your life. That's not groundbreaking. That should be routine. That should be something that you get on a daily basis in a healthy relationship with friends and family. And that's what this smells of. And it's one of those instances where a very expensive perfume like this one, I say, well, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking because it delivers an emotion to me that per se is not groundbreaking. And it delivers that emotion in such a very, it's such, in such a sophisticatedly beautiful way. It convinces me. It's, I'm sold. I'm sold on On the Beach. Oh, yeah, and it's called On the Beach. Oh my God. Totally. You see, dude, I swear to God, subconsciously, maybe I was thinking about it, but as the visual on the beach, being with friends and having the barbecue and everything hit me, I totally forgot about the name and title of the perfume for a second. And now it's back again. Remember how when I was reviewing uh, California Dream or D California Dreaming, the, the other uh, perfume, do I have it here, by the way? I don't know. Oh, yeah. California Dream is the other one I reviewed the other week. I said, what a clickbait title for a perfume. It's such a clickbaity name for a perfume, uh, California Dream. Uh, because it, it promises more than it delivers, you know, or or maybe it, it delivers exactly what it promises because a lot of, but California is not just Hollywood, I said. So Hollywood delivers, you know, the Hollywood promises stuff, but doesn't always deliver. California is maybe slightly different. But anyway, this is not a clickbait title. This is really on the beach. It smells like this wonderful sunset on the beach. It's good, you guys, but it, it really turns to that addictive smell half an hour to one hour into the perfume. Um, after the neroli cools down a bit, it, it starts emanating from the warmth of your body and it's just so gorgeous. It's delicate, but firm. It keeps humming. I This is not gonna be a longevity beast. This is not gonna be a silage monster. This one is gonna stay close to the skin. You're gonna have it for maybe four to five hours and then it's gonna fade out. It's a light, delicate one. But for that light, delicate moment of having it on, it's wonderful. And it's like nothing I've smelled before combined the way it is. Of course, all of these ingredients, we've smelled them before elsewhere. Sure, goes without saying. But the way that Jacques blended them together, he really did something here. Nothing groundbreaking, but something firm, like a... a, a he gave a, a, this perfume a good backbone, a good family structure support system backbone that makes you feel safe as well does that make any sense to you guys and i'm living for that moment of being at the beach with that warm sun embracing me those last rays of, of sun as it sets down and the sky turns orange and then it turns pink it turns a little bit blue you know all those colors spectrum of the rainbow as the sun then disappears completely and as it disappears our little setup cinema outdoor cinema that we've taken with ourselves to the beach lights up and the movie starts and we all cuddle up together and, and watch it together ah oh, and then we got our blankets ready like that type of feeling just so good drinking a beer if you're of age a little beer could come in handy there as well just a little moment a little refreshing cooling beer to round up the whole scenario i don't like to drink uh almost ever but like from time to time in a moment like this a beer is good it just kind of hits the spot for me and it's kind of a, this perfume has it within it. Now, is it worth the money? Um, it's it's only worth that amount of money, that mark top price that Louis Vuitton demands for these fragrances. It's only worth that money if if that dream is is worth the money to you. You know, if that visual of that warmth. And that beautiful surrounding of, of that safety feeling of being with friends and family. If that 
is worth to you transforming into smell and owning that smell, if that's worth to you, then yes, this perfume is worth the money. This perfume is not worth the money for the longevity, for the silage, for the projection, for the brand, the, you know, it's just overpriced for everything, except for that dream. So if you're into buying dreams, this one is worth the money. It, you know, if, you're, if you want to buy this as buying a dream, uh, then yes, it's worth the money. If you want to buy it as a quality product that's going to last 20 hours on your skin, no. Four hours tops, and then it's kind of gone. So that's it. It's a wonderful dream on the beach. This on the beach perfume by Louis Vuitton. And yes, I am considering purchasing one, goddammit, <laughs> because I love it that much. It's... It's so simple, but it's so simply soothing that it, it really, it calms me down. I feel like my stress levels go down as I'm sm smelling it. Oh, and on another note, uh, and, uh, and not on another note, but and another note uh, that, I, that is worth mentioning is, uh, it's not the type of perfume that smells best when you kind of dig your nose into it. Half a meter to a meter distance from your skin as it emanates, like as you're moving your arm, or I don't know, I haven't sprayed it on my chest yet, but having it kind of in the proximity of the nose, it develops best in that distance between the skin and the nose. It 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 gets its full bloom. It reaches you in full bloom in the best of ways. Smelling it right off the skin is a little bit too chemical. Uh, having it at a distance is just perfect. It blooms as it vibrates off the skin. We can say it that way. So that's my review of On the Beach. And I would, as I said, California Dream, this should have been called something else. I said this should have been called My Mandarin Gardens, whatever. On the Beach should have been called Dream, like a dream on the beach, beach dream or dreaming on the beach. That Because that's what this one... Oh, it's so good. I think it's the Cypress. I think it's, it's such a genius move to put cypress in the base notes and not like in, usually cypress usually ends up in the mid notes in perfumes, but to put cypress as the backbone of this entire perfume, cypress has a very specific, not medicinal green smell, but cypresses, if you've ever smelled them in nature, they have, um, if you take their little tiny weird leaves that they have these little branches with these little tiny green growths on them and you kind of rub them through your fingers, it has a particular smell. It's uh, very... Mm, not medicinal, but historic herbal in a way. It has history. It smelled cypress smells of green history, like the history of the color green through herbal essences. If that makes any sense, that's what cypress smells of. And having cypress in the base note of this perfume was a really genius move. Maybe that is it maybe it is a bit groundbreaking after all. To put cypress at the base of this and kind of kind of enveloping all the other ingredients together it is kind of genius, I have to say. And if it's not genius, at least it's it's a beautiful move. It's like giving the cypress a moment in history to in perfumery like to shine. Uh because the cypress here is divine. I mean it's a divine. It is the cypress. Mm, delicious. So you might be seeing me unboxing a bottle soon. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because it still is super expensive and uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, but um, it's the first Louis Vuitton perfume that I'm like really like saying yes to. And I've reviewed quite a few of them. So there's that. Let me read your chats. That's my review of On the Beach. Thank you guys so much for watching. David says, Dior Eden Rock smells very similar. I haven't smelled uh, Eden Rock, but I've heard from uh, Aisha that uh, Dior is releasing it. Um, David says, it's competing with Louis Vuitton on the beach. Hmm, actually, Dior Eden Rock smells of Chance Au Vive with salt. Okay, this doesn't smell at all like Au Vive. Not at all. Not at all. This smells much more natural than Ovive. It doesn't have the aldehydes. It's more creamy. This is much creamier uh, than uh, Ovive. 
in the opening notes as well. Jack says, maybe I'll try and get a sample, but I can't imagine myself paying that much for a whole bottle. I know they're so expensive. <sighs> they really are. Um, are there uh, are there s'mores on this beach? Oh, I love me some s'mores. Sure, we could like we could definitely do some s'mores. Yeah, Aisha says, I would really like to try this one. Sounds lovely. I'm telling you, after a year of lockdown, of trials and tribulations, to go to this smells of comfort. This smells of like, hey, we're going to have our beautiful days together on the beach without having to isolate, socially distance. One day, th this whole terrible situation will be over. We're going to be safe again. This kind of smells of that to me. Neroli always scares me. It can smell clean or grandma-like to me. Right. Yes, olfactive, I agree with you. In this instance, it, it's... It, it's um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It has a heft to it. I'm not a fan of Neroli. I always say this. But here, it's done It's done right. It's done right. Uh, Balade Sauvage gives me that feeling. Really love it. Balade Sauvage is less warm. Balade Sauvage is fig-based. So Balade Sauvage has um, a more Mediterranean type of smell to it a cooler, more distance type of smell. Balade Sauvage smells of something that is... I've also reviewed that one on my channel. Link in the card section above, but also in the description box down below. Dior Balade Sauvage. But it's more Mediterranean, meaning there is a stone cottage next to that beach somewhere in France, Mediterranean. And it's very cool in that stone cottage in, in summer as well at night. And that coolness is what Balade Sauvage is. This one doesn't, there's no stone cottage anywhere. This one smells of sand. And by the way, sand is one of the ingredients. And in, don't, don't forget, you guys, sand is, the smell of sand is listed as the mid note for this perfume. So this is not, there's no cold emanating from within an object like the fig with the stone cottage as a visual for Balade Sauvage. Um, the only cold we get here is when the night falls and so the sun is gone and the sand then kind of all the heat of the day is emanated and then the sand turns cold after a certain hour. It's a cold coming from the sand, not from the stone. So that's the difference between Balade Sauvage and uh, On the Beach. Uh, what a gorgeous scene, says Jack. Thanks. Oh, Debbie says The Fog. The Fog would be John Carpenter movie, another great movie to watch on the beach, but It Follows is more... The smell of this one. So Vase said, for me, this smells like a day on the beach, not like a beach. <laughs> Jack says, but does it go to the beach? <laughs> yes, it does. And it stays on the beach, too. I love a good soapy and uh, steamy neroli. Uh, it's soapy. It definitely has a soapiness to it, Jesus. Yes. Alessandra says, ohaza. I mean, bad typing. Oh, you like ohaza? Um... Oh, Aisha says, Louis Vuitton should do a 40 mil like Dior or a 35 mil. Well, they do, but then you got to buy a set of like four different ones, like the travel sets. And that costs a lot too, because you get four. But uh, if you buy it with friends together, you could split it up and everybody pays their portion. Uh, Kira says, think I'll pass. Ensemble Mythique still sounds more my style and next to sample. Great video, though. Thank you so much, Kira. Louis Vuitton is going niche, says Debbie. Well, yeah, they're trying. Aisha says, Rich, I really like Toba Color. Very warm and soothing. Oh, Rich Mitch says, uh, the new Dior's are a write-off. Toba Color, I've reviewed that one as well. Description box, um, card section up here. Link is in the description box down below as well. Toba Color, uh, check out my review for that one. <laughs> Leslie says, I'm glad you like this because I absolutely love another Louis Vuitton perfume. Ah, Les Jours Se Lève. Uh, I was never sure if Louis Vuitton was just churning out perfume for profit or they knew what they were doing. Jacques cavalier Beltrude is a wonderful perfumer. Of course, he knows what he's doing. I just don't think he's completely free to do what he wants there. But this one, he nailed it. So, you know, there you have it. So it's not always, he doesn't always nail it, but he nailed it here. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you liked this video, and thank you for co-reviewing it with me. If you like this video, don't forget to thumb it up and subscribe to my channel. You can also push the join button next 
to the subscription button and become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dig of All Spelled Together, and get access to extra perks there as well. One of the many perks is being listed here as a member and a patron uh, on the sidebar scrolling after every video or at the end of every video as a co-producer of the Fashion Bunker. The best credits? Oh, good old Hollywood style on the beach after we've all cuddled together and the movie has ended, night has fallen and then the end credits scroll through and the final girl has survived the horror movie. And that's where we are at at the Fashion Bunker. Thumb up the video if you liked it and you also get perks uh, with uh, special videos that do not come to my public YouTube channel, but you get to see them exclusively only as a Tier 2 member or as a patron. So that's also something to look forward to if you're into the Fashion Bunker community so much that you want that extra oomph and kick. You also get reductions for the merch store. Uh, you get coupon codes for that as well as a member. So it's definitely worth looking into. Stay tuned for more reviews, for more Louis Vuitton perfume reviews, for more fragrance reviews in general, and fashion. Uh, what else can I tell you? I don't know. Do we have any more comments to read here? Because the credits scroll when they scroll, and then it's like... <laughs> just said, except... Wait, tu oh, Turbulence. So, I might be reading tu uh, Turbulence as well, because I have Turbulence since many years, but I can't find the, my video review of it. I thought I reviewed it already. But it seems like uh, Turbulence is one that we have to review again, I guess, because the video is gone. Um, so, Jesus says, Turbulence was a beautiful mushroomy and leathery tuberose. And they have discontinued it. Louis Vuitton has just discontinued Turbulence. Um, and Jesus also says Louis Vuitton perfumes are low-key giving car air freshener vibes, except for Turbulence. Uh, Jack says, mushroom girl. Yes, ma'am, says Jesus. <laughs> Fabulous, says Jason Martinez. Alessandra says, bye. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this review. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.